Did you know they had a twilight for furries? Good morning everyone, I'm that dude over there and I have a wonderful project I would like to present to you. As you know, I like to post things that I do with my loving friends who actively hate my existence. So today, I'm going to share one of these fun things with you. Today, I present the series summary of Beastars, a story by Paru Itagaki that follows the angst session of teenagers who have animal heads and traits. Before I begin, I'll quickly address why I chose Beastars. It's because it was the first one I presented to them, and I like to go in order. Anyway, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe as it helps idiots like me who suck at promoting videos. So Beastars is a drama series following its grey wolf protagonist Legoshi and his adventures at Cherryton Academy, after the murder of one of his drama club members. The series is often compared to Zootopia because of its shared world style but being more mature as the main character almost has sex in episode 2. But before I can actually dive into the series, I need to quickly address Itagaki's previous work, Beast Complex. This is technically considered a prequel as Beastars is set in this world. Basically, Beast Complex is an anthology series that addresses the problems with mixed society with Predator and Prey. It shows the prejudices that predators face against Prey and vice versa as they go about their daily lives. It still goes on today and even references Beastars after it ends. The key points that'll be carried over from this into Beastars are that animal racism exists, interspecies relationships are extremely complicated, especially one between uh, herbivore and carnivore, and meat is extremely taboo. It's basically on the same level as drugs to these guys. So our main protagonist includes Legoshi, a bug-loving loner with extreme levels of self-hatred and a fetish for herbivores. Next is Legoshi's love interest, Haru, the promiscuous rabbit with the personality of your grandmother. Good luck washing that image out of your head. Then is Legoshi's love interest, if you believe Naruto and Sasuke are a canon couple. This is Louis, not Louis, or Rui and he is a very prideful herbivore. He believes in a strong sense of justice and is willing to go off the deep end for his beliefs. And finally, while not the most relevant main character, our final introduction is Juno, the other gray wolf. Her existence is to suffer the female equivalent of blue balls as she's constantly getting shafted by the story. There are also like five different characters to know who are relatively important to know that will come up later in the story, but I'll let you pause to read them if you're interested. Alright, so our story starts with the murder of this guy named Tam. He is the catalyst of the entire series. He gets cornered by a predator, and Tam decides that instead of cowering, he's gonna use his last words to tell the carnivore that they and all others are monsters. And just like that, Tem is murdered, and the series can begin. We meet this goat named Els, who immediately gets creeped out by our main protagonist for his creepy behavior. However, after learning that Legoshi is just an awkward teenager who borders on being an emo delinquent, she immediately apologizes, and we can finally follow Legoshi's POV. The next day, Legoshi comes across Louis, and the sexual tension here is immediately present, thanks to this lovely scene. Go ahead, Legoshi. Bite me! Louis is the A-list actor among the drama club actors, and plans to be the main lead for the upcoming performance. Louis calls him Legoshi though because the person replacing the newly dead Tam is a failure at line reading, and Legoshi needs to be a lookout that night while Louis and the new guy practice. While this is going on, Haro is having THE best day ever. and contemplates speedrunning life by running into a carnivore. Thankfully, her prayers are answered, as while she's thinking about this in the dead of night, Legoshi's feral instincts finally trigger, leading to them being in the most awkward hog imaginable. Haru suffers instant regret, while Legoshi struggles with not wanting, but actually wanting, to eat this white rabbit. But before Legoshi can properly battle his demons, the drama club guy from before gets Legoshi's attention. This small window allows Haru to escape, and Legoshi learns that Louie had an accident on stage and needs some sleep. Night passes, and next club session, Louie orders Legoshi and a fellow club member, Kibi, to get flowers from the gardening club. Meanwhile, away from the main cast, it's revealed that this accident that Louie suffered led to him breaking his ankle. He decides that this is merely a flesh wound and does his best to hide his injury from everyone, leading to more pain. And speaking from experience, how the fuck does this guy do this? 
Anyway, Legoshi ends up all alone with Haru on the roof and has trouble communicating his thoughts about last night with Haru. Haru misinterprets Legoshi's intentions and leads to a scene I wouldn't be caught dead being seen on my phone. Small animals? It's a beautiful cream color. I want to see how far it goes. Hey, stop! I, why? Legoshi quickly leaves, slamming his tail in between the door, and we skip to days before the play. Bill notices that Louis seems to be constantly stressed and asks if he needs any help or rest. And Louis responds rationally by pulling a gun on him. I'm not joking, this is a real manga panel that I don't believe got translated into the anime. Anyway, the day of the play arrives and after performing sick tricks and a full 5 star worthy performance with a broken ankle, Louis finally passes out from pain. Now, for non-theater kids, usually you have two days where you have to show the production. This way, people who can't show up for the first day can watch on the second day. So with Louis out of commission, Bill is promoted to actor, while Legoshi is unwillingly thrown into the role of one of the villains. During the night of the second performance, Legoshi gets a smell of a smell that is smelly and follows it into the boys' bathroom. Here, he finds Bill calming the nerves by snorting rabbit blood. You know. Typical high school stuff. However, for Legoshi who's struggling to come to terms with himself, he sees this act as an unspeakable crime against humanity. Or would it be called... What else would it be called? This boils into the performance where Legoshi and Bill get into a real fight during their scene together. But thankfully, Louis, reprising his role as Adler, arrives before things get nasty. <laughs> Too nasty. But this leads into the Meteor Festival arc, where Legoshi tries taking Haru on a date after the story introduces Juno, who falls head over heels for Legoshi. And like before, when Louis meets Juno, the sexual tension is immediately present when Juno pins him to the ground and threatens him in his position. I will not elaborate. Legoshi and the boys of the dorm decide to go into town for the day, where they share gossip, go shopping, and enter the black market. They sell meat and blood to carnivores in need, and Bill flips at the chance to get his hands on some. Legoshi hates Bill for this and runs away from the black market. However, the, he decides to take the most interesting route by running through it. He drools after he jogs through the market, and because he didn't run the other way like a normal person, he gets confused for a meat addict and gets kidnapped. Legoshi wakes up to find the world's most Goku Panda, Gohin, the doctor of the black market. He helps carnivores in needs and realizes that our poor boy Legoshi is in fact a carnivore in need. So as any responsible doctor would, Gohin provides furry prawn to Legoshi, hoping the post-nut clarity will set his instinct straight. However, all this does is solidify to Legoshi that he loves Haru when he finds her getting buddy-buddy with Louie. So during an event that can only be described as YouTube Stalker Apocalypse 2020, Haru gets kidnapped by the Lion Mafia. Louie would go to rescue her, but the mayor, who is also a lion, tells him to back off if he doesn't want his anime backstory to be known by the public. Louie doesn't want his anime backstory to be revealed, so he pretends that he never cared for Haru. This pisses off Lugoshi, who says that once he saves her, Louie will never be allowed to see her again, and then storms off like a child who was told no candy for breakfast. Legoshi teams up with Gohin to raid the lion base and saves Haru after knocking out their leader. The big boss says this isn't over as he plans to snipe Legoshi as he and Haru are leaving the complex, but Louie says his ass is mine before delivering a bullet straight through his cranium. Louie then gets surrounded by the lions and the scene pans away as Louie laughs maniacally. Because it's too late to return to school, Haru and Legoshi rent a room in a love hotel and almost have sex, but Legoshi cockblocks himself as he reveals the events of their first meeting, and Haru cockblocks Legoshi when her instincts tell her to get away from the big bad wolf. But if you think this is how it ends, then you're wrong, because Juno is not going to let her man get taken away by some tiny rabbit. Anyway, after the meteor festival, Legoshi and Haru meet up at a hill that overlooks a city where Legoshi proclaims that he will get stronger for her, and Haru says she'll wait for him. This arc, or season one if you watch the anime, has interesting character writing and wonderfully great music. Like, fighting animals is a fucking killer track. But that being said, the dynamics between carnivores and herbivores are stupid and overly racist, and it doesn't help that herbivores have more good people than carnivores. But what did the people on the internet say? IMDB has a show at 7.7 out of 10, and remarks that this show is weird, but in a good way. On Rotten Tomatoes, critics gave it a 94%, while audience scores gave it an 81%, with critic Dylan saying, 
not just for furries. I wouldn't be surprised if Dylan was a furry. But this leads us to... How to begin covering this arc. Mm. Oh, alright. What does B-Star mean? Well, we finally get an answer. B-Stars are basically the best of the best who are destined to unite the division between Carnies and Irbies. They are discovered in high school where they are awarded the title Young B-Star, but with refinement they become Sublime B-Stars. We'll touch more on that later though. I only bring this up because the council has decided that whoever uncovers the death behind Tam will become the next B-Star for Cherryton Academy. At the same time, a Jojo snake meets up with Lugoshi, who trusts him to uncover the death behind Tem. In universe, this arc takes place like a week or two later from the last arc, and in between that time, Louis has gone missing, not coming to school, and not reaching out to his side dish Haru. But we can't think about that cause OH MY GOD A NEW CHARACTER JUMPS IN FROM THE SHADOWS. This is Pina, and his personality is flirtatious asshole. He's an herbivore who loves pissing off carnivores for the shits and giggles. He actually serves a purpose because he's one of the few herbivores that gets under Legoshi's skin. But after Pina gets introduced, Louis returns to say, I'm leaving, bitch. Everyone is shocked, but especially Legoshi, who wonders where his bestie has been since that day long ago. Louis tells Legoshi to leave him alone, and Louis leaves. He is welcomed to a limousine by the lions from the mafia. Hold up! We need some context here. Yeah. It's rewind time. Alright, so after killing the previous mob boss and Louie is surrounded by the Lion Guard, Louie decides to speed run life rather than give them the satisfaction of killing him. However, the Lions don't know what to do since they share different ideals from their former mob boss. This leads to the Lions incapacitating Louie before he could give himself a skull piercing. Louie wakes up after a long nap and is taken to dinner with the Lions, where tonight, They'll be feasting on a well-cooked steak. And despite Louis being disgusted by the food presented to him, he decides to partake in the meal to show he's not weak. Because Louis proves himself, the Lions decide to make Louis their new boss. That's how the Mafia works. Anyway, Louis begins improving the life of the Black Market by improving the Shishigumi's rep. That's the name of the specific group, by the way. And making the lives of the herbivores better in the Dark Market. This includes saving the life of a stripper from becoming someone else's meal. While there are a ton of lines in the Shishigumi, I'll do my best to name them and at least one thing about them. <sighs> Alright, first is Free. He's got a scar and doesn't care about much. Next is Dolph. He is serious and wears a suit. Then is Agata. He is the youngest and is the most naive and optimistic of the group. Next is Miguel. He, like the others, is a proud lion of the Shishigumi. Then is Sabu. He is the oldest of the Shishigumi and wears a bandana across his face. From there is Jinma. He is like Dolph, but less serious. You can tell this because his color palette is much lighter than Dolph's. After him is Dope. That is not a nickname, it's his real name. He specializes in negotiations. Fitting. Next is Hina, who is just a carbon copy of Miguel. Seriously? Who let this guy into the group? This guy sucks. And finally, it's Ibuki. He's the one we actually care about because he is the dad that Louie never had and always wanted. Even going to the lengths of shielding his eyes when he's about to see something incredibly gory. But wait! There's more! We can't continue the plot yet because there's even more context to sort through for Louie's character. We will now be diving into Louie's sad anime backstory. See, Louie is actually a native to the black market originally being sold as live veal equivalent for deer. However, his dad, Ogma, adopted Louis for his company because he could not have kids of his own. Bit of a skill issue, but to ensure that his son has the skill that he doesn't have, he threw Louis into a room with bloodthirsty carnivores with a knife. Young Louis proves how little he'll grow in 16 to 17 years by immediately trying to speedrun life at the young age of 4. Speaking of 4, the only remaining trace that he belongs on the black market is the 4 on his foot. Ogma decides that this proved Louis' resolve, and Ogma decides to keep him as his son. This good act comes back to him years later when Louis threatens to kill him if he doesn't leave school. Ogma tells Louis no and Louis runs back to his real dad like a wimp. After a long look at Louis, what's Lugoshi been up to? Alright, 
I knew it! Apparently, finding himself to be weaker than the killer, Legoshi seeks out Gohin for some training. Gohin accepts Legoshi's request, but tells him that he needs a haircut so he won't be tracked back to his high school life. So one haircut later, Legoshi looks like he's ready to go to military school, and Juno decides to do something important and look for Louie. However, this goes about as well as you would expect, with Louie telling Juno to leave after dancing with her under the streetlight. Man, it's been a while since we last seen Haru. What's she doing? Well, she gets pissed at Legoshi for not spending enough time with her. Legoshi tries to explain that it's because he wants to get stronger, but Haru explains that she didn't realize this meant that they can't hang out. At this point, their relationship is on the rocks and Legoshi should do something about it. So, Legoshi proposes to Haru. Haru says that they haven't even gone on a, like, a real date, and this is unreasonable. However, Legoshi tells Haru that it makes perfect sense because she likes him, he could protect her from bad people and bugs, and she won't be lonely. Haru has enough of this and leaves Legoshi. However, they aren't broken up yet. The results of Gohin's training start to bud fruit with Legoshi as he becomes notably stronger and faster. However, because of Gohin's training, Legoshi's jaw strength has decreased significantly so. Why is this important? Because Legoshi finally finds the killer, and it's a giant bear man by the name of Raze. He's definitely been here the whole time, and didn't just turn up for the sake of the plot. They have a scuffle, and while Legoshi doesn't win, he also doesn't die. So that's a plus. So now we can dive into the psychology of Riz. Basically, Riz is super strong and has intentionally built himself to model the cuddly teddy bear on those honey bottles you would buy in stores. But because of the government, Riz has to take medication for his strength, so he doesn't accidentally rip the limbs off of his classmates. But despite his efforts to come off unthreatening, there was only ever one person to call him out for being creepy, that person being Tem. Despite this though, he and Tem began forming a strong friendship, with both of them opening up to each other. In an attempt to destroy the barrier that separates carnivores and herbivores, Riz shows off his strength to Tem after a night where he doesn't take his meds. Tem calls him crazy and tries to leave, but in an accident, Riz tries to pull him back and injures him in the process. Tem runs away from Riz, leading it to the beginning of the story, but Riz misinterprets Tem's actions, believing that Tem consented to being eaten by him and develops a weird war-like philosophy where being eaten is the strongest form of friendship between a carnivore and an herbivore. Ever since that day, Riz lost his sense of taste, Dimitri style, and can only taste the sweetness that honey can provide. Legoshi and Riz plan for a proper fight on New Year's Eve, to settle this once and for all. The anticipation for the fight reawakens Riz's sense of taste, and he stops taking his meds in preparation for the fight. Oh, I forgot to mention that Pina hears the conflict between Legoshi and Riz, and tells them both that he won't report them. For the next scene, Riz would threaten Pina, but Pina decides to stand strong like Louis, and not kneel to an oppressive carnivore. Juno and Haru get a moment to hang out, and the beef between them gets settled when Juno can see why Legoshi likes her. Legoshi completes his vegetarian training, and in a drug trip, Legoshi regains his fur color. But before Legoshi goes to fight, he sees Louie one last time in the black market. Legoshi dresses in drag to hide his appearance from the mob, and when he approaches Louis, Louis tries not to act out of pocket to protect Legoshi. However, Ibuki, who doesn't understand anything that's going on, looks on from afar and tries not to judge Louis for his poor taste in women. Legoshi tells Louis about the, his fight and leaves Louis concerned for his maybe friend. As Legoshi leaves, Ibuki comforts Louis and tries to tell him that it's okay. We can find you a better woman. So New Year's Eve comes, and that night, Legoshi and Riz meets up to duke it out. However, despite his training, Legoshi is still no match against Beefcake Riz. Meanwhile, Louis's worry exceeds himself and wants to leave the Shishigumi to be with his maybe friend, Legoshi. Ibuki knows that the only way out of the mob is in a body bag, and instead of listening to Louis, he takes him out on a car ride through the city. Ibuki tries to get Louis to change his mind, but Louis is persistent about leaving. Ibuki then hands Louie a gun and drives into a dark tunnel. Ibuki explains that one of them will leave alive, but Louie doesn't want to kill Ibuki. The scene is tense and quiet, but in a flash, a bullet is fired. Louie is alive, but Ibuki is dead. It's revealed that Free has killed Ibuki, and he tells Louie to never return to the Shishigumi again. Alright, so let me explain this real quick in case you don't understand. Ibuki and Louis have gotten extremely close, close enough for Ibuki to care too much for his friend Louis. He would show this by getting Louis proper meals, instead of meat, stuff herbivores would eat like, you know, a salad, 
all right? Uh, he'd also protect him from the horrors of the black market. And he grew so close that he knew that this isn't where Louis belongs. So one night, Ibuki gives Free a gun, telling him that if he should ever fall into his instincts and try to eat the boss, to kill him. Free is skeptical about this, but in a trade of lives, Ibuki sacrifices himself for Louis, just so he can leave and return to his normal life. Louis rushes over to Legoshi to aid him by offering himself to give Legoshi a Zenkai boost to beat Riz. Legoshi, however, tells him no, and that this goes against his training. But Louis, in a display of pure emotion, breaks down not wanting his potential friend to die, like his real dad. So Legoshi re-enters the fight looking jacked, and Riz comments on how they are the same. However, Louis is revealed to be alright, and only missing a leg. Legoshi and Riz's fight end in a draw at the start of the new dawn. Why did it end so abruptly? Well, because of Pina, of course. Riz kidnapped him to make Legoshi mad, and once Pina saved himself, he called the cops. With everyone safe and well, Louis gets a new metal leg, Legoshi and Riz are held in prison for the whole eating meat thing. However, Legoshi gets let go because of good word from peers. However, the eating meat thing leaves a mark on his permanent record. While the consequences of this action doesn't bother Legoshi at first, once he learns that he can't marry Haru after this, he dies from instant regret. Legoshi and Haru meet up at the tree from the end of the first two arcs and question what to do now. This arc, or season two of the anime, had some great points and some sour points. For one, the music is still a banger, especially with the opening and ending from Yasobi. The development of Legoshi and Louie are great, and the animation accompanying it brings high praise for 3D adaptations of anime. However, that being said, the messages can be a bit pretentious, and the ending can feel a bit anticlimactic. Audience scores on this season reach a score of 75% on Rotten Tomatoes, with reviewer Kate Sanchez going as far to say, B-Star Season 2 blends slice of life, action, fantasy, and mystery into a near-perfect story that doesn't rely on the novelty of anthropomorphic animals. But now we need to discuss something important. So, the next big arc and final season of the Beastars anime is the Melon Saga, and the anime has a lot to adapt for a 10 episode season. But, about the saga as a whole, it's a mixed bag, with what feels like a very rushed ending. I'm not going to go in order of events like I did with the prior stuff, but I just want to tackle what I believe to be the best and worst parts as accurately as I can, going off memories and pictures to guide me. So first, Jack gets development, and Louie rehires a Shishigumi, and both of these guys are fantastic. Jack gets a little more character depth, and the lions are awesome wingmen, even without Ibuki. It's just so wholesome. Juno tries to go through development as well, but the story shuts her down again because they couldn't figure out what to do with her. The residents of Legoshi's apartment complex are so interesting and a breath of fresh air compared to the class in Cheriton. And then there's Gosha. But to get into him, we have to get into Legoshi's sad anime backstory. And, well, I mean, I guess Gosha's, but you'll see when I get there. So, a wicked long time ago, there were a Legoshi and Louie before Legoshi and Louie. These two were Gosha the Komodo Dragon and Yafia the Horse. These two were best friends and upcoming B-stars for their schools. Yafia is implied to have feelings for Gosha, but on a night in town, Gosha saves an aloof gray wolf named Toki and falls in love with her. After learning that Toki is pregnant with his child, Gosha and Yafia go their separate ways, and Gosha becomes a dad, while Yafia becomes a sublime B-star. Despite being married, Gosha and Toki never actually share a kiss. Unlike Goku and Chi Chi, Gosha's reasoning actually comes down to his biology. Gosha's venom is extremely corrosive and lethal, so any lingering saliva could kill his partner. Because of this, Gosha develops a clean freak mindset, where every peck on the cheek would also be immediately followed up with sanitizer and heavy scrubbing. So after their child Liano is born, Toki decides to steal a kiss from Gosha and disposes of all his sanitizers just to get this kiss. However, to share a kiss with her beloved like that, ended up with her dying from the venom in the process. Despite losing his wife, Gosha loved his daughter very much. And surprisingly, Liano developed a resistance to Gosha's venom. This resistance often being compared to the taste of marmalade. Liano grew up as a gray wolf, however, as she grew into maturity, she began developing scales like her father. To ensure her offspring wouldn't grow up to be a freak like her, 
Lianao has a one night stand with another of her kind before the scales would make a notable difference. This one night stand led to the birth of Legoshi, and once she had confirmed that Legoshi was a normal grey wolf, she speed ran life at the ripe age of 32. This left Legoshi alone with Gosha as his sole caretaker. And while Gosha did his best for Legoshi like Liano, Legoshi blames him for his mother's death and avoids him out of regret for saying it. Gosha goes on to care on for other hybrids and displays such a loving and caring persona that it rivals characters like Iroh for me. This guy gets such a crappy hit in life but chooses to make the best of his life. And that's so heartwarming to see. But like I mentioned before, this saga also has the only beast star shown in the series. And it's Yafya who is just furry Batman. He doesn't leave a good impression of what Beastars are meant to be, except being vigilantes. In fact, with the departure of Chariton, the tone of the manga shifts to feel more like some kind of shonen battle series than the drama that it was set up to be in prior arcs. It doesn't help that they introduce Q, a rabbit from Louie's past that teaches Lugoshi about summoning his stand from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, and I know this may sound like I'm bullshitting, but just look at this manga panel. Look at it. They try to resolve racism in Beastars so quickly that it feels so forced and hand-fisted. And Juno gets absolutely destroyed. If you thought I was being mean before about this dog, the story does her down dirty by playing with her and then throwing her in the trash. It's fairly sad. Louis' endgame is so sad and feels contradictory to how the story was taking him before. And if I hadn't brought it up before, the solution to racism is absolutely stupid. To have carnivores have meat without taking herbivore lives, they introduce seafood. Like, what the fuck is going on here? No one thought about this before? This reminds me of the ending of Madagascar where they solved Alex's savageness by preparing him sushi. This is so dumb. I mean, yes, this isn't like the full story, but like, it's just dumb. But probably the most controversial character in the Melon Saga has to be the character himself. There is so much done right and wrong with this character that it's weird. Like, his story about being a hybrid and showing Lugoshi the dangers of carnivore-herbivore mixed relationships is great. It proposes a natural problem to Lugoshi's wants in a way that, does, that even he doesn't consider. And compared to the antagonists like Riz or the Shishigumi before, Melon has a connection to Legoshi as a potential mirror to what his descendants will become if he goes through with his relationship with Haru. However, that being said, Melon is also Beastar's Joker, and the shit Melon does and gets away with is ridiculous. He's an antagonist that feels like he doesn't belong in the series tonally, and doesn't feel grounded in the reality that the world builds up. His backstory is fine, but I don't like it. Basically being abused by his mom, and having an absent father who abandoned both of them. If the father had been eaten by the mom like the story tries to set up before, that could have been used to further Legoshi's development in its instincts and his fear about killing Haru. Basically, the biggest flaws with the finale is that it feels rushed. It's not satisfying, and overall, it's kind of disappointing. Granted, I understand the creator's reasoning for ending it so, but it doesn't change how I feel, alright? I was so attached to this furry world, how could you do this to me? <coughs> uh, sorry, I got a little carried away there. Anyway, that's Beastars, a story posing a what-if where Jacob won instead of Edward, and Bella was constantly in danger of being bored. It's definitely a 7 out of 10 story, with an ending that shits the bed. If you like this video, let me know, and while you're down there, subscribe for future content. If you think me making this video makes me a furry, why not tell me in the comments below? But, till next time, stay safe out there.